Maybe you're in a situation where a real estate photographer can't make their way over to you for one reason or another, and you still wanna sell your home. And you want your pictures to look good. Well, I'm gonna show you how you can get professional looking photos that look like this out of this, your own phone. So I'm going to take you through three phases that will show you how you can use your own phone and any phone, for the most part, can do I don't actually hold my phone out, to pull off some great looking photos. And if you hold on till the end, I'm going to have an, a little bonus section um, for a little bit of a real estate photographer's secret uh, that can really take your photos to a whole nother level. So dive in with me and let's get it done. The first thing that we need to do is get our place prepped. Um, I'm not gonna go, uh, mm, prepping tips. So there's a lot of resources online. I'm not gonna go too in depth and really you could get as far as to look up maybe some interior design things. Um, but I think the biggest thing here is that there's things to avoid. So as opposed to things to really ramp up how it looks, that's for a different type of video. But we really wanna avoid some things that are gonna set people off in different ways. That's kind of extreme wording. Um, we're gonna start in my kitchen. First culprit in the kitchen is going to be a trash can. Chances are it's freestanding, it's taking up space. Go ahead and either move it to a place where it tucks in nicely or get it out of there. Next thing, surfaces. If you have things on your countertops, get them out of there. They're taking up quality space. Last thing, I've seen this way too many times. Get rid of those dishes in the sink. The number one crime in any photo shoot is toilet seats up. Close those toilet seats. Also, bathroom sinks. We tend to have too much stuff on there. If there's toothbrushes, definitely get those off. And honestly, a lot of soap, things like that, you might wanna remove those too. Also, let's go ahead and show what's behind the shower curtain, shall we? It doesn't have to be all the way open. That can look kind of weird too. And in this situation, I the shower is actually, the head is on the other side, but we've got this nice looking plant. I've got a good angle. So I'm kind of being in my own criminal here and taking a picture that's not showing the shower head. We really want to show that shower head. This is just such a nice picture. I had to go with it. Bedrooms and to a certain degree, living rooms. Um, you might have made the bed and it looks nice for the first time in a long time, but you wanna make sure that you're not seeing a lot of lines on those sheets as well. Make sure that's all as straightened out as possible. Sometimes even coming to the degree of using a different type of sheet. Next thing, wires. We, we shouldn't be seeing wires. That's not a nice looking thing. And also, plump those pillows. First thing is camera settings. Everybody's phone is a little bit different here, so it's gonna differ uh, depending on each phone that you're using. But uh, in general, we definitely have some things that we can take a look at to make sure that we're getting them right. I'm using the Pixel 3 for the sake of this demonstration. In general, there are some settings that every phone's gonna have that's gonna more or less be similar. So in mine, um, one thing we want to do is, is make sure we're getting the best uh, file size, the best file type. And in mine, I even had to turn on the ability to even select them. So you might see HDR, you might see RAW, um, you might just see some sort of like higher quality, advanced quality. That's what we want to make sure we're going for. So now I get to come down here and select HDR on. I don't know what this HDR plus is. Enhanced. I need to mess with that. Uh, but as long as I'm getting the raw, see the JPEG only, that's not good enough. I'm getting the raw here. Um, check. I know the iPhone 11, some other iPhones, you can buy like a $5 app 
and get a different kind of quality setting um, to release the raw there. But, um, but so that's what we want there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. And we're going to make sure that my dog's in the picture as well. Our next camera tip is going to be what height to shoot from. Now it might feel normal, natural to want to shoot from eye level, but in reality, that's going to give us a whole lot more ceiling and a whole lot less floor. And now when you ask someone what the square footage is of a place, um, you're not asking about the square footage on the ceiling, you're asking about the square footage on the floor, where you're going to put all your cool stuff, uh, make everything look nice. That's what you want to be honestly buying. So likewise, in our photography, we want to be showing that floor. Uh, so shooting from about a waist level is going to give you a much more actually natural feel to it um, and also help you with the next camera tip. The last camera tip is angle, the angle in which you hold your phone. It's actually probably the most frustrating thing that I see, um, especially if I ever see it in my own work, but it's, uh, you wind up with the lines, in the vertical lines, whether that's the corner of a room or, or just like a table leg or anything that's going vertical, it starts to skew one way or the other because what you're doing is you're tilting your phone and that, that makes something feel very amateurish very quickly. So this is gonna be blurry, but you wanna make sure while you're holding it to keep it straight. When you start to tilt down, you can see those lines start to skew or, or tilt up, those lines start to skew the other way. So make sure you're keeping it level when you're shooting. So get your camera settings all figured out right, put it horizontally, put it low, like around waist level, and then make sure that you're shooting it straight. So at this point, you're probably taking some pretty good looking pictures with your phone. Um, at this point, I could probably just cut you loose and have you shoot a place and pull off some professional looking pictures. But I want to give you some tips uh, on exactly how to take those pictures that are probably at a professional level and raise them up a notch. So we're going to look at three composition tips. Our first composition tip is going to have to do with seeing walls. So if you only see one wall in your picture, it's probably some sort of detail shot. Um, imagine um, maybe a piece of furniture with the wall behind it, and that's not gonna really reveal too much about the room, which again is what people are buying. Um, likewise, with two walls, you're probably really putting the focus on something. Uh, the place I most commonly do that at is kitchens to highlight two countertops and all the appliances. But if you can find a third wall to get in your picture, um, that's going to be, you're going to be uh, up against one wall, just barely getting it in your picture. And then of course the, the wall in the back, and then you're opening your camera up, your view up to the third wall on the opposite side that you're positioned from. Your natural desire might be to find like those two windows and match that up. And that's not necessarily a bad picture, but in real estate, we are selling the entire floor space. So we want to find usually as many walls as we can. And there, when we open it up to three, now we're getting that third wall. That's going to give us more dimension to see what we're looking for. And that's going to actually give you the depth perception that you as a human is used to having to understand the, uh, the layout of a room, the depth of a room. Uh, I mean, you could stop right now and just look straight forward and you can probably see three walls where you're standing at, assuming you're in a house or a building. You're going to see three walls and that helps you to see the depth and to understand the relationship of different parts of the room. That's where real estate photography really starts to stand apart from other types of photography. We're going for recreating a space to a person as opposed to catching the beauty of a moment. <laughs> Sorry to sell out on beauty, but there's no room for that here. No, you can find beauty, but that's not the priority. So our next composition tip is gonna be line. Lines, lines of sight. Take for example, in our bedroom, um, we've got a, a nice looking shot here, but there's a plant in the way down here in the corner. Now. At first glance, you might think, oh, that maybe adds some dimension to it or something like that. But again, that's not what we're going for here. So by moving that plant out of the way, 
we're going to open up the entire area around the foot of that bed, even the, the side, the other side of the bed, and allow the viewer to gain a much better understanding of the room um, as opposed to having like maybe a cooler looking picture because it has some foreground depth in it. So while you're, when you find a good position in your room, including our first tip with maybe three walls in it, and it really displays the room well, go ahead and make sure that, that you're getting a line of sight and if you see something in your way, do your best to get it out of the way. Our last composition tip is, I just looked at subject. Okay. <laughs> Subject is what I'm saying. Um, we, we've already touched on how real estate photography is different, has a different purpose, a different priority than most other types of photography. And it doesn't come up any stronger than in what your subject is in your picture. So for example, we've got some beautiful light coming in. We've got this nice kind of stove top. Uh, we can put a little foreground in with the refrigerator and get the, the lovely tea kettle there. And before you know it, you've got this beautiful shot and it's a beautiful shot that's absolutely meaningless to a person who's actually really looking to understand the real estate property and what they might be interested in buying. So um, you're actually in some ways wasting somebody's time by looking for these beautiful photographic uh, shots that are of the wrong subject. But what we really want to do is show the kitchen for the most part. Every once in a while there's a reason for me to get like a little shot of a really nice appliance if that's a selling point. But that's not what we were doing in that last shot. We were just showing how artistic we can be and that's there's no room for that here. So by being able to come in here and get the wider scope of the kitchen, maybe include the refrigerator there as well, just by taking a few steps back and placing the, the subject on, on the room. Uh, in the picture I went for for the kitchen, uh, it was a little challenging to fit everything in. We have appliances on both sides. We have countertops on both sides. We've got a big refrigerator. Um, it's, it's a lot to ask for a camera phone to be able to capture that entire view. But, uh, but by balancing some things out, by taking that step back, we are able to see the natural elements that the kitchen has to offer. And that's the subject the natural, the, the elements that a room has to offer. All right, we are done. Except I have a little bonus segment here if you made it this long. This is gonna take your pictures up if you followed all the rules that I've told, it gets you maybe 50% of the way there. This is gonna get you that other 50%, and it's true HDR. So HDR, the concept is that you take a picture, you, com you combine multiple pictures, one of uh, a low exposure, where you don't have much light in there, one of a high exposure, where you have a ton of light in there, and then one at the more natural medium exposure. So what you're gonna need to, need to do this right is to have a tripod and uh, one of those cell phone, I had it over here a second ago, one of those cell phone holders that can screw into the tripod. Uh, Cause all your pictures have to be from the exact same point with as little movement as possible. Don't slam on your, your picture button when you, when you take the picture. But if you have that, and at this point, you know, you can probably find a cheap little tripod on eBay for 20 bucks. The, those camera holders are cheap as well. It might be worth it to you to go ahead and order those, spend some extra time prepping your place while you're waiting for those to come, and then go ahead and take those HDR photos. Um, there is a difference between the natural HDR setting that you might have in your phone. Um, that's a technological um, trick. It's not a trick, but it, it's just, it's not true HDR. It's not the true method. And so like my phone had HDR and I took HDR pictures and they are better than non HDR pictures, but they're not true HDR. And so you'll see at the end when I post the, the pictures, my final product, that those were each based on me taking a low, a high and a, and a medium. So here you go. These are the pictures that I took. Uh, this, this was including editing. 
So uh, you want to make sure that uh, if you follow all these tips that, that I said, that puts you in a position to then have your pictures be edited and enhanced even further. Um, but e even if you don't do any editing, I know you're going to end up with way better pictures by following these steps than you would have just going into a room. And uh, so you can do a great job too. And I wish you the most in your uh, photography and in your selling.